Although I don't play this game anymore, all I can really say is that boys, it was a good run. Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lace, and today we're going to be talking about Dragalia Lost and its uh, its recent announcement, as well as addressing some of the fears, some of the concerns in terms of our our beloved game Princess Connect, considering they are both Psy Games games. And so, without further ado, here we have the notice regarding the future of Dragalia Lost. So. Thank you for playing the Dragalia Lost game. And it's here where we know, oh man, it's uh, it's freaking GG, man. And so in a nutshell, the Dragalia Lost main campaign is scheduled to reach its conclusion in July 2022 with part two of chapter six, in which uh, I think the it's all gonna be done. The story is going to finally finish. And so beyond July 2022, we'll find some other date where the service of the game itself will close. Uh, it is indeed end of service, my guys. And the rest of the notice is essentially saying after the final set of new adventures is added in about nine days, I believe, for the next three months, there will be no more updates. There will be no more new adventures. There'll be no more new dragons. There will be only event revivals as well as like, well, which is going to be reusing our existing content. Now, this is, uh, it's low key kind of heartbreaking because uh, I don't know about you guys, but I used to play this game quite religiously. It's probably one of the few gatches that I kind of took seriously and kind of made me drop some cash. Certainly one of the first gatches that I actually went ahead and bought like some $30 pack or something for a selector. And one of the only games where I actually played for more than one year. And so if you guys aren't familiar with the game, all I can say is that it is a pretty decent action RPG kind of game. Little 3D chibis like this one over here, kind of similar to like your blue archive ones. And you're running around, you're doing boss battles essentially. And there is quite a fair bit of mechanics involved. On top of that, you've also got like a party system as well as skill system. So as you can see over here, which is using skills, running around using skills. And then we can also do some dodge rolls, a lot of real time, a lot of dodging, a lot of like, it reminds me of like MMO bosses. And so all I'm trying to say is that if you did want to give this game a shot, you do need to do so before July 2022. Now let's talk about why exactly we came to, um, we came to an end of service. Well, I guess my own kind of little analysis predictions. And so first of all, typically speaking, all of these decisions are going to be made in the name of money. As you can see over here, here is the sensor tower page for Dragalia Lost for the US region. Although I'm pretty sure JP was also like, I think everybody was on the same region. Like considering when I played it, uh, me from Australia, I pretty much always co-opt with the JP people. So this one here is the downloads and revenue for the Google Play variant of Dragalia Lost. Uh, that's just for the US. And then we've got Japan over here, which is gonna be pulling in the same because this is February, 2022 worldwide. Okay, I should, uh, should saw that first. And then on the flip side of things, we've got the iOS variant. So this is pulling in 200K revenue as well, and then 10K downloads. So let's say conservatively 400K in revenue and maybe like 10 to 15K in downloads a month. Um, it's sounding kind of low. Like, don't get me wrong, my guys, there have been a lot of other games that have survived on a little bit less revenue. Uh, I think it's just time that Psy Games and Nintendo, and Nintendo were the publisher for this one, they decided that it was time to pull the plug. Now, why was the downloads and the revenue so low? I think it was a mixture of reasons. The first one being that I, I think, and I don't know if this is still the case, but I think that it is emulator banned. And so in that regard, you've kind of already like cut out a massive part of your target market. And to be honest, like speaking of the target market, you can see over here that the majority of these countries actually don't even have access to the game. I'm pretty sure they only launched to like 23 countries, if that. And so that certainly could be a contributing factor to its low downloads and low revenues. Like, don't get me wrong, guys. And I don't know if you can like just like blame Nintendo or blame Dragalia or whatever. They probably just didn't want to go through the licensing issues to get it to all those different countries. All right. And so the next thing I do want to talk about is the equipment system itself. So here you can see we have a party of characters and I know that this is the old school party system. I'm pretty sure this one is like the, the newer one, but whether we're talking about the old system or the new system, it doesn't really matter because we're talking about right now, gacha acquisition. So for each of these characters, you have a uh, Yudin, you have these like the characters themselves. And then on top of the base character, we also have their weapon type. We've got the dragons and then we've got the worm prints, which are in essence, their equipments like 
so special effects above HP uh, 90%, then you're gonna get an extra 15% damage, something like that. So the way that Dragalia Lost was monetized was that you can roll for two things characters over here or dragons down here. And yes, there is a dupe system. However, the dupe system was probably one of the most free to play friendly ones that I have ever seen. And that is that for the characters, you did not need any single dupes. You needed like, I'm pretty sure farmable and in-game materials to take them to the max potential. As for the dragons, you needed like duplicate dragons for them to be able to get their max unbinds. So for example, uh, if you only had like one copy of a particular dragon, then it could only be level 40 and if you had uh, five copies so you could like smash together the duplicates it could become level 80 something like that and on top of that when you smash the duplicates together you also get like enhanced skills if I'm remembering correctly but like the real kicker is that you did not actually have to smash uh, the duplicates so like these guys like two of these guys together what Dragalia eventually implemented and made quite commonplace was the concept of uh, global unbinds so they gave you like a global material in which you can smash it into any dragon and it would count as a duplicate. That's why I would say it's probably one of the most free to play friendly duplicate systems. Because aside from that, these weapons, the best weapons, best in slot weapons were all crafted from actually just like playing the hardest content. And then on the side of these worm prints over here, like they used to be in the gacha and then they removed them from the gacha so that like we would have a way more free to play friendly experience. And so therefore to get like these ones down here, you just needed to grind them from events or just wait for them to give it out, stuff like that. And Hence why a lot of people would call Dragalia a little bit too free to play friendly. And so with that, I think all of these are kind of contributing factors to uh, the end of service of Dragalia, unfortunately. I'm going to be honest, I don't really know what else they could have done, like maybe put more into marketing the game. For me personally, it just kind of got a little too grindy and I was just bored of it. After like a year, I'm, I'm pretty like, I'm pretty happy with that. Being able to keep my attention for over a year, I think that's a, it's pretty well done. And so what I do want to talk about next is looking at these revenues from Dragalia Lost and then looking at the ones from Princess Connect. Uh, should I be scared? Considering most of us on this channel are actually like playing this uh, Princess Connect game. I, uh, I... I don't know. I actually don't know. We we are making less than Dragalia at this point. This is 400k from Dragalia combined. We are making 300k, although we do have a little bit more downloads, maybe 50k last month. However, we do have a few differences in which we could be like, okay, well, it's not all Dragalia lost. For the publisher, we do have crunchy role games, which uh, could be good or bad depending on how you look at it. But on top of that, what we also have is this guy over here. We do have the anime, so that means like Blu-ray Sales. And then hopefully like in conjunction with the game, some kind of like cross collaboration in which like the anime is going to like sell more players to play the game. And then the game is going to get more people to watch the anime, uh, maybe more crunchy roll subscriptions, etc, etc. Very, very much the mixed media approach that I talked about, I think a couple of months ago. For a lot of people, Princess Connect was actually quite a pretty good score in terms of the anime itself. So if I come over here, I think this is Annie List and it's got a number six high rated of 2022 although we do need to keep in mind that this was pretty much in the first season of the year there are still another three seasons to come however we have to remember that it is like it's a relatively unknown ip and for it to go up to six like that's pretty freaking good and of course we are looking at the global markets which is i think what these two websites do capture in my opinion uh maybe we should be a little bit worried 100k and 200k which is 300k revenue there is, I don't know, I, I don't know about you guys, but if it was me, there is a chance that I'd be tossing up the idea of maybe we should take down the game. And of course, I don't freaking want that, right? This is probably still my favorite game to this day. But the reality is, is the numbers don't lie. Like that's, that really is just not looking too hot. I guess all I can really offer in terms of like comfort words is that we do have this mixed media approach with the anime and the game. Maybe they will support each other, maybe. And maybe with the success of the anime, uh, we will have a less of a chance to go. That, to be honest, is where I'm at right now. All right, and so that's kind of it for this one over here. Uh, very sad to see Dragalia go. It certainly was one of the very first gacha games that actually kept my attention and was a lot of fun. And so my guys, let me know down in the comments below whether you've actually played this game before, because I know a lot of other people also kind of share this history. 
uh, this game being one of the first ones they actually ever played. And so if you guys do end up dropping a comment down below, I would really appreciate that because it means you've watched up until the end of the video, so thank you guys so much. If you did enjoy this video a little bit, then please consider a thumbs up, but otherwise, if you would like to see more, then please consider a subscribe. And so as your girl, Elisan once said, thank you guys so much for watching, and thank you for being around Regalia, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.